to be with the uh, team and uh, his friends and uh, candidates in such a distinguished bunch of friends, if I might say, from predominantly the subcontinent, but I do note that there are other continents that are equally represented here, including Africa and uh, Latin America and Asia, and of course, uh, uh, members of this uh, very good community. We include Australians of anglo celt background as well, like Sarah. <laughs> They're a minority. <laughs> Talk to them in Hindi. <laughs> that will teach them. <laughs> they will find out how it feels, how it feels like. Look, we are a month of friends, and I was delighted to uh, have been invited to attend this event because I knew that I'd be surrounded by so many friends with whom we've done terrific things over the last uh, couple of years. And as you know, I'm particularly privileged now because I represent, uh, since November last year, the elected of Tarnit that happens to be within the municipality of Wyndham. And so we are neighbors with team, and of course uh, we share a lot. I was given thought to uh, tonight's uh, contribution. The number one thing that I want to say is that uh, team has shown to be a terrific representative of this region, the interests of this region, and indeed the people of this region, <laughs> number one. He is, of course, uh, one of the, as we call them, young talents, if not young Turks, and we know that team will go places. And the western suburbs and the northern suburbs of uh, the state, uh, time and again, have delivered terrific members of parliament who are and become custodians of a great legacy, of a great labor legacy. And when I look at the great labor legacy of this nation, I believe that it goes hand in hand with the subcontinent, with your culture, with your family values, and with your commitment to put it back into the community. I am proud, as you know, having come to this country and having experienced being an asylum seeker and a refugee, having come to the country at the age of 18 with no English and no education, I am proud of the opportunities that were given to me by this country, and indeed, if I may say, by the Australian Labour Party. I do remember, I do remember and read about the fact that in 1901, this country became a federation. The states and the territories determined to come together and form this great federation of ours. But at the same time, one of the saddest chapters in this country took place, which was the enactment of the Immigration Restriction Act 1901. Otherwise, and better known, or worse known, as the White Australia Policy. And between 1901 and 1974, effectively, if not more, or thereabouts, this nation fundamentally did not welcome migrants and refugees of backgrounds that fundamentally were not white and predominantly that did not come from anglo celt background countries. And as you know, that legislation was extremely sophisticated because it was not legislation that was based on race. It was legislation which was based on a dictation test. So those officers of immigration at the time could have done a test of any of us in languages that were of European background. And the archives and history show that there were tests conducted in German, in Dutch, and in French. And I remind us of that because the truth of the matter is that it took also a great bunch of Australians of anglo celt background fundamentally to have changed that to have argued the case against the racist policy of the Restrictions Act of 1901 and brought that to an end. And I'm proud of the Australian Labour Party because the Australian Labour Party was instrumental and fundamental and pivotal to the demolishment of the white Australia policy and the bringing of an end or to an end the Restriction Act of 1901. And that's why we are here. 
Because when that policy came, up, came down, it opened the doors for all of us. And the Australian Labour Party, and Gough Whitler in particular, I think ought to be known for having been the pioneer and the founding father of what is, of course, a very inclusive immigration policy now. But Gough Whitler and the Australian Labour Party, as you know, also brought about fundamental beliefs that underpin this nation. First of all, if I may, education, which Tim Watts argues time and again because he understands the nature of multiculturalism. And I say education because education goes hand in hand with multicultural language and cultural diversity. Sometimes people say, and we do, in fact, have a very strong bipartisan multicultural policy, particularly so in Victoria. May I say, especially so in Victoria. But you and I know that unless we accompany that commitment to cultural and language diversity and faith diversity with quality education, you cannot equalize up and you cannot give people like me and your children real opportunities and equality of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Because I remember when I came to the country, I lived in high-rise public housing. I was given through Gough Whitland the opportunity of the tertiary education allowance, which gave me the opportunity to do two things, learn English and acquire tertiary education. And that is in fact what opened the doors to genuine equality of opportunity. And I believe that consequently, a good government is a Labour government of Bill Shorten and Tim Watts and Daniel Andrews who will continue to rebuild of opportunities around education so your communities and every community in the state have access to real opportunities and good opportunities in this community. That is why I'm here to support Tim Watts because I believe that he understands that very, very well and is very strongly committed to this. Can I conclude by saying the following? And reflecting, if I may, on the opportunities that this community presents. Time and again, I experience some degree of frustration. As a policymaker, as a member of a government, although I'm now the speaker, and not strictly, of course, linked to government policy, but I put that as a gentle, constructive message to the federal colleagues and to the state colleagues. I think that your diaspora, if I might say, the subcontinent community can do more and add more value to the growth and development of this nation and indeed of Victoria. And I don't believe that yet our government has got it right in terms of utilizing the full resources available to all of us through yourselves. Because economic growth, cultural growth and development and innovation requires your contribution. And I think you can do a lot more if we come together as governments and policy makers and work together with your community. I recently did the Australian Directors training and course, and I found that there are some two and a half thousand boards. Two and a half thousand boards. Do I surprise you if I say that the majority of those appointments fundamentally go to middle class white Australians educated in Melbourne, Monash and other universities? Of course not. Women are yet to be more inclusive in these appointments to boards. We manage fundamentally our economy or the predominant majority of our corporate uh, society, public and private. And needless to say, there are multicultural communities that are also missing in action and of course, if you're a woman or multicultural communities, of course you're missing more in action than ever. And I say so constructively because I believe that it's us, governments and the community that miss out if we do not utilize your resources, your intellect and your talents more and more into the future. I think one of the challenges for us as a multicultural community is to continue to work in that direction. And whilst we recognize, and I think this is the best and greatest nation there is in the world, 
and certainly in terms of its multicultural policies, we become better because we can be self, uh, 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 we self-analyze and constructively look at ourselves and we ask what can we do more and how can we do more and how can we can do better. And I think your community is one of those communities that has a lot more to offer and I wish and will work towards that level of partnership which ensures that we can use your talents, your energy, your intellect and your commitment to this nation more. Can I conclude by saying that I'm confident that Team Watts will continue to work in representing the interests of the region and indeed of the Australian Labour Party well. Can I confirm with you the following? Imagine if we had a Bill Shorten as Prime Minister. How much more could we do in terms of health, in terms of education, and in terms of all those good things that we can do together if we work in partnership between the federal government and the state governments. And I think a team will be one of those very strong players that can help raise the opportunities for Victoria and argue the case of Victoria and this region. So can I say thank you for having me and giving me the opportunity to say and make a few remarks. Can I wish Tim Watts and your candidates, friends that have come, as I understand uh, as well from other states, uh, good luck. And can I reiterate our commitment to your campaign and to re-electing you, not just in Jellybrand, but into re-electing Tim Watts and Bill Shorten into Canberra in terms of becoming government. And I look forward to that because I think the opportunities are immense and we do not want to continue to have the waste of opportunities that we've had under the current administration. So good luck and welcome. Welcome those of you who have not come to events before. Many of you have done this before, but please remain inside the tent. Remain involved. Remain committed to the Australian Labour Party and of course to Tim Watts in this region. Thank you so much.